Greetings, my fellow YouTubers, and welcome to Big D's Entertainment Rankings and Reviews. My name is Doyle, better known to y'all as the Big D. And now, if you are ready, I am wearing this for the last time in a video, but don't worry, you may see me again this sometime. But you never can tell. As now, I am finally going to bring to you a ranking of all the Friday the 13th series. Which will also include Freddy vs. Jason. Now, yeah, I kind of underwent through some changes on this ranking, but I decided to make it pretty smooth and all. So, I do hope you're ready for it. So, if you're ready, here we go with number 12, The Bomb of the Chain is Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Yeah, I know a few people do like this. I like it a bit, but not a whole lot. It's okay, but I just kind of don't care for the supernatural feel and the absence of Jason of being a physical character and what have you. Well, some of the characters are pretty good. I did like seeing Erin Gray in this. She was pretty good in as the character she played. And again, Kane Hodder, absolute greatest Jace as well. So, not much to be said about, but I did like the ending where Frey's claw comes up and drags Jason's mask down to the ground. Which reminds me, that's actually coming up next on the list. So, Jason Goes to Hell is number 12. Number 11 is, yep, Frey versus Jason. Now, although this ranks in the top 5 by Nightmare series list, but not on here, unfortunately. Mm -mm. Well, why? Because, well, Ken Carsinger, I'm going to say it's not my absolute favorite Jason, unfortunately, because he's slow and all, but although he did have do some pretty darn good kills, though, in the movie, but still, this would be more Nightmare on Elm Street. Great, though. Oh, excuse me, everyone. But yeah, I think Frey vs. Jason is kind of low on here, so it's number 11 on the list. Sorry. But anyway, number 10 would be Friday the 13th, Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Now, I know I have few... Well, well... Likes for the movie, and I actually do. It was the first Friday I saw. Now, some of the characters are hit or miss, and what have you. Kane Hodder making a second appearance as Jason was pretty good. I just didn't care for him teleporting so blooming much. Yeah. Too strange, and what have you. And, well, of course, we didn't even get to... Manhattan until about maybe about halfway through this movie. Uh, so anyway, uh, uh, excuse me again. Now some of the kills weren't too bad, despite being toned down because the MPAA. I mean, kill with the guitar, the saw rock, and of course the death of a that boxing dude Julius. Yeah. Those were all good kills. So anyway, that means that Jason Takes Manhattan is number 10. Number 9 is... Now this is kind of lower than what it was on my my former Friday the 13th list. That would be Jason X. Now don't get me wrong, I still like this movie for certain reason why I am, but it's kind of slid down a little bit for me. I mean, I did like performances we got from Lexa Doig and Lisa Ryder and, and some of the other cast, but Kane Hodder once again did a great job in his final performance as Jason and also as Uber Jason. I did like this for it, the movie for its tagline, Evil Gets an Upgrade. Mm -hmm. So Jason X isn't factually a bad movie. I, I consider maybe it's a so bad it's good flick in my opinion. 
But you don't have to take my word for it, though. But anyway, of course, the scene where he kills a Adrian, I think that's her name. Yes. When it freezes her, it's in the, the, the liquid nitrogen, it smashes her, smashes her head down the counter and breaks it off. Yeah. That's brutal. But good kill, though. So anyway, Jason X is number nine. Number eight is Friday the 13th, part seven, The New Blood. Yeah, this is a little more higher than what was on the previous list I've done. But anyway, I'm kind of forgetting about it. But anyway, I do like New Blood for certain reasons as well. Some of the cast is hit or miss, like Jason takes me in, but nevertheless... Some of the kills were okay, but they were still toned down a bit. The kill with the party horn to the eye, the, um, let's see, hmm. Oh, yeah, and, uh, well, it's kind of hard to explain, but seeing Kane Hodder in his first performance as Jason was worth it, and once he's unmasked, real creepy, huh, folks? But Tina was an absolute great final girl for this, using her telekinetic powers. That was really saved this movie. Oh, excuse me again, I'm just tired from working so much today. <laughs> but nevertheless, I think New Blood is still worth a try. I really did enjoy it, and it's number eight, number seven is Friday the 13th, A New Beginning. Yeah, this was formerly 6th on my list, but it's gone down just a little. But don't worry, I don't really hate the, this either, because it's got some hysterical moments and has more kills than any other, and I know that it was um, Roy Burns who became the, the Hockey Mask Killer, the new Jason... Well, being in disguise to get revenge on those who killed his son. Mm -hmm. But anyway, this had so many kills, too many to mention, though. Of course, I do know I like the kill with the guy who gets that little layer, layer belt strapped around his eyes, and Roy turns the big. Stick and crashes. Yeah, that's gonna hurt. Yeah. And the killings of those uh, rednecks. Yeah, that was good too. I think it was a fun film. <sighs> kill, kill fest. This was. So, Friday the 13th, The New Beginning is number seven. So, that means what was. Well, I think I had seven last time swapped places with. Number six is the remake, Friday the 13th from 2009, which I reviewed yesterday. Well, since I rewatched it a couple months ago, I'm going to say that I like it a little more. It's grown on me a bit. I absolutely did like Derek Mears as Jason. He was really fast and what have you with that character, gang. So many kills. That was really, really worth it. Uh, look at the old Vori's home. Yes, that was good too. That's one thing I forgot to mention about. I did like the inside of the Vori's home in the, the final act. That was real good. The kills were good and pretty brutal and what have you. Everything. And again, most of the cats was kind of here and missed. And um, that's all I can say. So anyway, Friday the 13th Remake is number 6. Now for the top 5. Number 5 would be Friday the 13th Part 3. I absolutely do love this movie. It's great. I love the the main theme at the intro and the closing. Most of the characters are pretty good. I especially like Chris. She was real good. Ah... Uh, See, Rick was a good character, and let's see, um, I just liked, I just liked most of the characters, 
like some of the characters or most of them. But anyway, they were all good. You know, some kind of had a hit or miss. Well, seen and what have you. If you know what I mean, of course, I know one would be an easy miss. Chili's just yelling that Shelly's dead when she's going up the stairs and what have you. That was just. Mm -mm. Yeah. But I still love Friday 13 Part 3, where if I'm watching 3D or not. In which case, I didn't watch in 3D when it was Friday the 13th last week. You'll be happy to know. Thank you. So anyway, Friday the 13th Part 3 in 3D is number 5. Number 4 is Friday the 13th Part 6, Jason Lives. Now, that was pretty good. I did like the guy who played Tommy Jarvis in this. To be my second fan of the Tommy Jarvis trilogy. Of course, New Beginning would be right behind it. And, well, well I'll mention later. And, of course, the top one, my top favorite would be, well, the final chapter, which we'll see where that winds up. But anyway, Jason Lives was exceptionally pretty good. The kills were here, miss. I mean, I liked hearing, um, Man Behind the Mask song we hear. Absolutely good. And the kill on the in that camper trailer that's on the on the road was real good. Uh the intro scene was good. And Jason being resurrected as a zombie. Yeah, definitely really good. The, so that's about it. So, anyway, Jason Lives is number four. Number three is Friday the 13th Part 2. Love this movie. The characters are real good. Uh, Jane's a great final girl. Like, let's see, Paul, who was real good. Uh, let's see, and uh, Mark, who was the handicapped dude, got hit, got slapped in the face with the machete and his wheelchair starts rolling down. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Vicky, of course. I absolutely loved her. <laughs> Shame she had to get killed. <laughs> but anywho. And of course, I don't mind the pota the bur burlap sack, potato sack, whatever you want to call it for Jason's on Jason's head. So, I don't mind it. This was before the hockey man, so you know what I mean. Excuse me again. You know what it feels like after a bit of a hard day of work. <laughs> but anyway, I did enjoy the story of part two. It wasn't too bad, and. It's good. It was. It's number three, Friday the Thirteenth Part Two. Number two is the original Friday the Thirteenth. Yeah, though it was one movie that came out the year I was born in 1980. I absolutely love it. I mean, even though some people may have this a little low, but I'm completely understandable. Like Betsy Palmer as Mrs. Voorhees. Let's see, Adrian King as Alice. We got some good performances from everyone. I like some, the characters. I mean, where if they're a little cuckoo or what have you. See, uh, Ned, who's a real cuckoo, and uh, Brenda, uh, Marcy, Jack, and Bill. And, well, even though she's the first, the girl to get killed off first, Annie. Yeah, anyway, like some of the other supporting characters, most notably Crazy Ralph. Yep, you're going to Camp Blood, aren't you? You'll never come back. It's got a death curse. Yeah. If you haven't seen my review of Friday the 13th, the original, yeah, I would appreciate you checking out. I'll provide a link to the playlist once I'm done with the vid. Anyway, 
But I did enjoy and when Mrs. Voorhees really goes into action and speaks in a silly kitty type of way and it, hearing her lean that she's hearing hearing Jason, what have you. Yeah. And I especially like seeing Ari Lehman as Jason coming out of the water, dragging Alice down to the lake. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Anyway, Rachel Friday 13th is definitely a classic in my book, and it's number two on my Friday the 13th ranking. Now, at number one is Friday the 13th, the final chapter. Now, I've watched this a few times, and it's already grown on me more than what it did, and I love it. I love all the characters, well, almost all of them. Some are a little bit of where you're missed. A more hit than miss, though. I mean, I did like uh, uh, Crispin Glover's Jimmy. He's young for the corkscrew. Like, hey, Tank, hey, where the hell's corkscrew? Yeah, um, several of the other characters were good, and I hope you don't mind me bringing them up. Uh, Tina and Terry, the double man twins, are absolutely adorbs. And very cute as well. But hey, that's just my point of view. Thank you very much. But anyway, the kills were real good. Jimmy's death, most notably, was a good one. Uh, anyway, and I did like uh, Trish and, of course, Corey Feldman as the young Tommy Jarvis. Really good. And, of course, uh, the guy who played Jason was real good. I forgot who it was, though. There were too many guys that played him. But, anyway, I think Friday the 13th, the final chapter, had a great final act, especially once with Jason's death. Gets him right in the hit by the machete, and his head's like down. Yeah. Really killer. Yeah. So anyway, that's going to do it. That and all these movies. Well, well, not counting the remake had great music by Harry Manfredine. I did like the music done by the guy who composed the music for the remake, which was good too, because it did provide some of Manfredini's tunage from the other movies. So that's it. Friday the Thirteenth, the final chapter is my top favorite of the Friday the Thirteenth film franchise. Now, and what did you think? What's your what's your top favorite of the Friday the Thirteenth franchise? Please feel free to let me know in the comments section, and like and subscribe to my channel, and be a part of the Big D Nation. And that will conclude my Friday the 13th reviews plus the ranking of the series. I do hope you enjoyed this. If you liked what you saw, click on IRDs in this corner. You can relive what I've done just since Friday the 13th and all the others in case you might have missed one. Or if you would like to see them again, click on this box for my Friday the 13th playlist. And you can see all the vids again if you would like or catch what you might have missed. In that corner, you can see my recent review of Silent Night, Deadly Night Part 2, which I did last night. And down there is the button to where you can subscribe to my channel. Thank you again for watching my Friday the 13th ranking. Until next time, I'm the Big D saying see ya.